All right, guys, welcome to a community safe haven. We are here with the viral coin AMA today. Just a quick reminder, nothing you hear on this recording is financial advice and AMAs are not an endorsement. They are a chance for us to ask questions. Today we have viral coin telling us about viral coin. Viral coin, take it away. Welcome to the Haven. Thanks. Thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is James McClendon. I am one of the founders of viral coin. So Viral coin, let me take you back on a little bit of history about myself. I've been a viral entrepreneur, so to speak. I've been in the web development scene for approximately 20 years, building websites for clients. And then I rolled over into app development. I launched large scale ad networks and credit card processing um, uh, app APIs. And Whenever I was working on the credit card processing, I saw that subs the subscription industry has not evolved much further than it currently exists. You enter in your credit card, you and it charges your card every single month. So I had seen reflection projects start popping up, but I didn't think that they were, I found problems in these projects. So I, what, the problems that I noticed were Early adopters, founders would get in earlier before everybody else. And as soon as the price started going up, they would dump their tokens. And it wasn't so anybody, it would always be a cat and mouse game to see who could get in early enough. And if, if a project has 40% or 60% of their tokens going to the founders, they're not going to keep them forever. They're inevitably going to dump on the market. And so that was one, one, um, problem I was noticing. The other problem I was noticing is uh, the problem of price fluctuation. You might have, you might owe somebody a payment on Bitcoin and it's a hundred dollars. You look at your phone, you've got a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin in there. And then you go send them the transaction and they say, I'm sorry, the price has changed. Now you only have $92 worth of Bitcoin. So price stability, I've also noticed as being an issue. So, and then the final issue that I've noticed with most tokens that aren't on their own, that aren't their own blockchain is you always have to have an underlying gas token like Ethereum or BNB or Matic to facilitate the payments. So it's kind of funny to me how all of these tokens say that they're going to change the payment industry. However, you, you can't change it unless you have an underlying token. So you always got to go home to daddy and get some Ethereum. And before you can actually do a transaction. So with all this being said, what ViralCoin is doing is disrupting the subscription payment industry by not only facilitating payments for your gas, utilities, rent, video on demand. We're doing it in a way where you get to pay for your bills with reflection. So the price of ViralCoin is going to stay stable However, you're still earning reflection, so you don't have to pay attention to the price going up or down every day. You know, you can take comfort in the price being stable, and you still get the 3% reflection. Now every month, so you bought viral, now you can just pay for your bills each month with just the reflection that you've earned. So and if, to talk about the, the gas stations, uh, the, the, the gas problem, because you know viral coin does have, require gas. So what we what we're doing is we're subsidizing um, gas stations by putting Ethereum and BNB into them, and we code it into our smart contracts where you can basically just transfer viral once you own it. You can just send viral to make a payment, and it routes through our gas station, and the gas is actually paid um, from our from it, and we are we rec we receive. Um, an equivalent amount of viral that would equate to the gas price into the gas station. And then your payment of viral is um, additionally sent. So, and talking about the founders getting 40%, 60% of tokens, we came up with what's called the fair balanced launch. And what that does is all of the tokens, we did not distribute to anybody in advance or early. There's no worries of, Viral coin being launched on a DEX on a, a pre-sale and everybody getting in early and then dumping whenever the price goes 10x, 100x. We made it a fair balance launch. So 
until one quadrillion tokens are minted, everyone's getting in at the same exact price. That will be $10 billion USDC in the liquidity pool. And then the price could potentially fluctuate then. However, we don't expect it will be with that much liquidity in the pool. And so all these things being said, we're not the most, the, these tokens that you see every day coming in that people just want to pump uh, and make quick money. We're trying to build a community of people who are aware of the over, overarching purpose of viral coin that we're trying to build a community of people who want to pay, make their subscription payments with the reflection that they've earned. And so it's, it's a different concept than you might be used to in, in, um, on these AMAs. However, our goal is to just get the awareness out there and get people um, involved in the community and understanding our project while we finish uh, building the subscription app. Everything else is built. The website has its own uh, decks in there. Um, we have our own liquidity pools on every single buy. How it's it, our liquidity pool can t um, on each of the we're on seven EVM networks, by the way. So on each of the EVM networks, what happens is you can take any token that's popular on the most popular decks on the network. So let's just say Pancake Swap, and let's say you have some cake. You can go to viralcoin.com, take your cake, swap it uh, for viral, and what ends up happening is that cake is actually routed through pancake swaps liquidity pool converted to usdc and then that usdc is deposited into our liquidity pool paired with um viral coin and how and how that works is we have our our dex contracts are uh, a fork of uniswap v2 with modifications built into them um to, to facilitate the routing that i just described however we have what's called the viral. We have what's called the viral vault contract, and what that does is every time the viral coin price on a, after each individual buy, if the viral coin price is too high, more viral coin are minted and deposited into the liquidity pool. If the viral price is too low, we buy back or the the vault contract buys back viral and uh, burns it, and so it keeps the price stable doing this we've we were audited by um two we had were two peer reviews uh, one was mood at gupta and then sentinel did our formal audit sentinel found the geese uh, bug in the actual ethereum uh, blockchain and that that caught our attention as to why we wanted to work with them where we're where we're at currently in um, in this whole process is we're raising $10 million uh, from investors right now so that we can do a three-year marketing campaign and educate people with exactly the viral coin message that in the news, it's not going to be like viral coin price goes up, goes down, or whatnot. No, it's going to be viral coin is now integrated with these specific e-commerce partners or these subscription services so that you can facilitate your payments. So we're wrapping up our APIs, which are going to allow um, Web2 properties to seamlessly integrate um, our Web3 functionality because how it's going to work is they plug in the API. Let's just, instead, we're not trying to replace their checkout process. We're trying to be in parallel with it. So there'll be a checkout with viral button. They click it and then they, it says, please enter the code on your, um, on the app. They open up the viral app, they grab the code, they put it in and they can, continue facilitating the uh, subscription and manage it directly from the viral coin app. So the, we, we kind of, well, we've, we've done a lot of, uh, we've taken a lot of inspiration from how PayPal does seamless integrations into web two properties. And so this will help us onboard. And then the web three properties, they can either accept viral or we can help them convert it to a stable coin, uh, a, a one for one back stable coin or any other coin that they prefer whenever they get paid out. And so that's that's what our that's what we're currently doing right now. We've been having meetings with several investors over the past past couple months and now things are really um, coming to um, a positive end and so we hope to have an announcement here in the coming weeks of uh, the investment and we are, are so that's that's the rundown of viral coin as a whole and it is 
um, unique as as I can put it, and we would just are trying to take over the subscription industry. Not only do you just – we're not just slapping Web3 on something. We're actually trying to do a paradigm shift where you're actually getting to pay your bills with just the reflection. And it's not – we're not trying to grow a community of people who are just trying to buy and sell. And so I, for, I didn't talk about the tokenomics, which um, was is very important. So 3% – yeah, so 3% – Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I thought you were saying you don't mind me talking about the tokenomics. Do you have a question? Do I, 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 like, I like a lot of questions. Okay. Um, go ahead, go ahead. So, all right. If you all right, wouldn't mind, mind, mind you, you, you tell when, when you speak. Okay. okay so, so they broke first, up. first question. Hey, James, mute yeah. when he's speaking. You have to mute yourself while I'm so perfect. Okay. Now we got it. Um, or else we got some feedback going here. All right. So. I have taken a lot of notes. Let's start with the first aspect of, so you're mentioning the price of viral coin is going to be made stable. I don't fully understand the mechanism with which that occurs. Um, you mentioned a 3% reflection. You mentioned a gas station and you mentioned a minting schedule. Um, can you explain to me just a little bit more about the, the functionality of the contract? Yes, sure. So whatever the buy actually occurs let's say what ends up let's just say you have usdc what's going to happen is it's sent to the it's routed to our viral um vault contract and what happens is you are then sent viral of of equal amount of the usdc and that same amount of viral is paired with the usdc and deposited into our liquidity pool so we're growing our own liquidity pool we are not you don't. We didn't have to add um, USDC and viral pair into the liquidity pool for the initial liquidity. We built this mechanism to grow the liquidity pool on every single transaction. So that's how. And so to keep the price stable, part what happens is whenever that USDC is sent to the viral vault initially, and then you sent your viral, and now before it deposits in the liquidity pool, it let's say the viral price. Um, is too low, it's using a portion of that USDC to buy back viral, and then it burns it. it so in the alternative scenario, viral, the price is too high in the liquidity pool. What we end up doing is we just mint more viral and deposit it into the liquidity pool. And then all the remaining USDC is just paired with an equal, on both scenarios, is paired with an equal amount once it's rebalanced and deposited in as well. So we... We, ba we use the purchasing token once converted to USDC to effectively keep the we to keep our liquidity pool at a balance or at the 0. 0.0001 price. It's the price that it's going to be at. And that's why we call it relatively stable. It can go up and down by a fr on an individual buy, but then on the next buy, um, it ends up correcting itself. So. Nobody else has done something like this. And um, so that is the unique part. And then the minting schedule, I, if I understand the question correctly, it's, it's constantly minting on all these transactions. And whenever one quadrillion tokens are um, minted across all seven EVM networks, we cut off the vault contract and all of the, all of the transactions just go through our own decks on viralcoin.com. So it's everyone, I feel like the reason we came up with this too is there's so many people who buy, they miss um, a, a token getting launched on a DEX and they're like, man, if I was just there a few minutes early or if I had known about this yesterday, I, I missed it. All my friends did, did uh, amazing with this. Well, guess what? This... Our minting process is going on, and until one quadrillion tokens are minted, this is going to take a fairly a significant amount of time. So everyone's got the chance and opportunity to learn about viral coin and participate at the same fair balanced price before the, any potential changes could even occur. And the tokenomics are there is the 3% reflection that occurs on every transaction. There is um, – a 1% referral fee where you can log into viral coin, connect your web three wallet, grab a fur link. And if you're not comfortable 
you could just create a wallet to test this functionality out. You just create it and what it shows you a URL and on that URL is your wallet address is encoded in base 64. And whenever a transaction occurs, your address is written um, to the refers, I'm sorry, to the refer ease um, uh, on chain. And so what ends up happening is every future transaction they do, you're still getting the 1% of every buy. So that's what incentivizes refers. And we hope that people start doing the viral coin challenge and challenging each other saying like, I've got a bigger uh, crypto influence and following than you check this out. And they share their link and then they can share their stats on Twitter. It's you get to one click from the website. So we hope it's kind of like the ice bucket challenge where people are just challenging each other to see how big of a following they have. And then 1% is our, the, for the founders, goes to on, on on each of the transactions goes to us so that is the incentive for since we don't we're not holding 40 percent 60 percent we're holding zero percent we grow with the community and this is also um our incentive for the investors giving them a percent of the one percent um of the transactions so it's a long-term play you know a lot of vcs they just want to have some type of um schedule that they can release their tokens they want to and but you know what that affects the price significantly. So uh, we really put a lot of thought into making something that would be fair for everyone to participate in, but still be able to um, earn reflection for holding and be able to uh, utilize by that by making subscription payments. Oh, oh, so that brings me to my next question: um, How do we make money off this exactly then? So, so if, if, if Subscription payments, you're, you're talking to a completely different market than you would be on Telegram or even Discord, to be honest. Um, you, you'd be trying to pull in people that don't necessarily use crypto and giving them incentive to do so. If this is about creating money on the investment, well, that's, you know, where we shine. Um, what is exactly your target market for this? So, uh, great question. Uh, first, how money is made, you're earning the reflection on each of the transactions. So you, since the price is stable, you don't constantly have to check the charts, seeing if it's up or down and when the seller buy and um, making trades, you can buy viral coin and hold it. And you're constantly making the reflection at the same price that it's always at. So it's not, and I agree that it is this, for example, Telegram, Discord, the people that are, many of the people listening to this AMA, this is a new concept to them. And I'm trying to, with our team, bring awareness right now that this is just uh, a different strategy in the crypto industry. It's almost, you know, people often will invest, uh, buy a stable coin and then get, you know, get 6% APR or whatnot. So that there are people like that in these telegrams and AMAs and whatnot who are interested. We're trying to get, our goal right now is just to get as many people involved in the project as possible, um, joining the community, bringing awareness, um, people who understand our, um, our concept, how it's different than others. Granted, it's not, it's not a 10X, 100X, but your value of your wallet just from the reflection on the price uh, being stable can flourish. And so it's, a, it's, it's unique in that aspect. And so we just we just want to grow, uh, we just want to grow awareness of viral coin and get the message out because a lot of our marketing is going to be about educating. And you're right, we're trying to bring on people who are not uh, already in the industry, and we're trying to make it as seamless as possible for them. No, I mean uh, to be quite honest, I, I think uh, a bear market is exactly the time to be doing this. And, and all right, I, I have I have more questions. Um, so before we get to my questions about your chain in particular, let's start talking about your fundraising. So you mentioned that it would be 10,000 in USDC starting liquidity, correct? So we, our initial liquidity, we could have started with $1 based on how we built or wrote our contracts. But, you know, we put a couple thousand dollars in there and now on every single buy, it's adding new liquidity um straight to the pool and it's it's the price isn't changing along the way either that's the 
interesting part. Anytime that's what, you know, whenever you start buying, whenever a token launches on a DEX, you, they put in the initial liquidity and the price of the token. Yes. It, the, um, the, the paired token is increasing, but um, also the value of the, your, the other token is just skyrocketing, which is what most people want. We just made ours completely unique in that aspect where we're a self filling liquidity pool. It just keeps growing until there's $10 billion in there and minting stops. Well, this is very interesting. I'm actually currently on your website attempting to uh to buy some viral coin and to see exactly how this process works um all right so talk to me a little bit more about your your fundraising so how many funds have you guys uh how much have you guys already raised um uh, well, well, all the all the fun stuff I'm, I'm gonna bridge while we uh while we get this answer so we put a over three hundred thousand dollars into this so far, uh, just bootstrapping, um, and we are raising ten million USDC from um, VCs right now. And we've just been on a streak of meetings and um, introductions to find the ideal investors for us. And if one of the deals I really want to close. It will be a major announcement. The others are other announcement. I mean, the other reason why it'd be a big deal I'm excited about is because the it'd be a they brought they bring more to the table than just money. They bring in expertise and whatnot. And then some of the other uh, deals that we're um, evaluating are just pure cash, getting a percentage of the one percent that we um, process on each transaction. And so, yeah, the money is going towards the marketing campaign, finish the education material, AMAs, podcasts, and whatnot, just to teach the masses, people who are already in the industry. Ideally, we want to onboard, we want to help grow the industry by onboarding millions of new um, crypto enthusiasts. Then finishing the viral vault, I'm sorry, the viral app, and then finishing the APIs, and then salespeople uh, for to onboard e-commerce partners for the subscriptions so that um, the, a lot of that's going to happen as we onboard more users. Whenever you have a solid user base, it's easier to get integrated in the websites because the potential spending power is significantly greater. They have a bigger upside. Um, and so it's more opportunistic for the e-commerce partners. So we need to be selling hard the entire process and keeping them in the loop. And that's where we intend to um, may, uh, spend our money, ra how we're raising our money and how we're spending it. Okay. I, I gotta say, I, I love when I'm surprised by projects and I am surprised by your project. I, I mean, mostly because I don't understand the exact function. So I'm looking at the total viral supply on all these different chains. So Explain something to me. From what I understood, this was a layer one. This is not a layer one. This is a cross-chain token that can be used in a unified manner and has tied liquidity. Yeah. So actually, each of those each of those seven EVM networks have their own different liquidity pool, and they also are all tied. Whenever we're doing the routing, what we did was we we base. Let's say on the Ethereum, we routed. To, on part of the transaction, if it's not um, already USDC that they're buying with, we just route it to Uniswap, it's a liquidity pool, do the um, convert it to USDC and then deposit it into our pool. So each one of these seven EVM networks is its own standard network and uh, st uh, standard um, liquidity pool. However, so another question that might pop up is, why are you on all these seven? Wouldn't it be better to be on just one or two because the reflection if you buy on the if you buy on one that's less popular than the other you're going to be receiving less reflection so a lot of our marketing um, initiative is is we're trying to tap into which um, communities on each one of these evm networks and making them aware of viral however the benefit though in strategy is i always recommend to people just see which um network um evm network has the most activity and go with that one if you're if you have a question on which one you should use when buying 
So that's why we, we put all the stats up there and then uh, of, of how much uh, total supply is there so that people can make an informed decision. Also, whenever you connect your wallet, you can actually see the actual amount of, without looking in, let's say MetaMask or Trust Wallet, you can see how much viral you have on each of the networks. And then you can see the calculated dollar amount because, you know, long numbers sometimes get to people and they, they get confused on converting it and copying and pasting it and calculating the actual value. Well, you can just see the actual equivalent dollar amount scrolling and you can click it too and see a bigger window. But we try to make things very clear for people and not vague whatsoever. Um, so I, I now have some viral coin on the Binance Smart Chain, which is, it does seem to be the most popular by far of all the, uh, of all the networks that you guys hear. The closest one is Ethereum, and that's about 10% of the supply. So now, just to make sure I understand, I'm going to hold this viral coin, receive reflections on it based on the volume. I'm then going to, because uh, the, the, the fees were about 28% going in um, with the bridge and everything. So I'm then going to hold until I'm even and then make money based on that. And then in the future, you're telling me after your VC rounds, I'm able to use this on paired websites for subscription services. That is 100% correct. And so that, you, that is correct. And want to answer back to the question you're asking about earlier, uh, you, you thought we're an L1. What we've done is, so in our contracts, we have what's called gas station code. And it's, it's you can look it up. It's not popular in tokens, though. I, I, I'm really surprised that other people haven't uh, incorporated this into their smart contracts. So what I will do with money that we raise is take a percentage of it and put it, let's just say, Ethereum and put it into, um, it's, it's very similar to a liquidity pool, and put it into this pool. And what happens is the transactions for each of these subscriptions will be routed through the gas station. So you're just sending viral. You don't have to spend Ethereum whenever making your subscription payments. It's going to route it in the back end. It's going to send the viral through. Uh, I'm sorry. It's going to it, how the gas station works is it pings um, the, the whenever you routing the transfer, it pings the gas station and that they're responsible for paying the Ethereum gas fee. And that gas fee, um, let's say it's uh 0.02 Ethereum, let's just hypothetically say. Well, that equivalent amount of viral goes into the gas station, and then that that fee is forwarded on to, uh, onward, and the viral is just sent. So it basically takes out the need of an underlying token when facilitating a payment. So we're so what this is what we're calling it is subsidized gas fees. So if you're paying for your subscriptions, you're not going to have to have an underlying token. And that's already built. We just need to put the money into the gas station uh, to facilitate these transactions. You're know, getting a lot of DMs about this. Um, okay. I mean, this is a, this is a unique idea. Uh, all right. So, I mean, the gas station is, uh, is unique even for a, like a, like a stable tech coin. Um, so, I mean, I guess the question is, this is volume dependent and this is VC dependent now, right? That is correct. So, so is my, is my, my, uh, my, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, so I, I guess my incentive to hold is the reflections in the meanwhile, uh, Interesting. How much have you guys raised so far? Um, we haven't um, taken on any of the money yet. It's we just have been spending out of pocket. You know, we we're we're still spending. You know, twenty plus a month currently, and I'm ready to I'm ready to bring on these other VCs. So I'm trying. I am working around the clock to get these deals closed. So I, I will let you know as soon as um, the money starts coming in. Uh, we're hoping that one person is able to fill the whole ticket size. Um, if not, we're going to have to break it up among these other um, investors that we're discussing with. 
a lot of fonts for sure, man. Um, I mean, you guys have obviously done so much work so far. Like I've, I've never seen anything this cross chain. That's usually one of my questions when I'm talking to uh, developers is how do you guys plan to move it over? But you've already moved it over and your bridge was, was easy to use. I understand the core concept that I just have to hold to get even then hold for, for profit. Um, okay. So who are you targeting exactly for these, uh, these subscription payments? So our goal is to bring on, we want to do the base utilities first and foremost, because it's got the most globalization um, in terms of uh, being able to pay your water, gas, electric, those are, you know, found everywhere in the world. So there's all, there's what, um, there's providers that, as you know, you see a common, let's say like a Stripe checkout process. Well, there's common um, aggregators out there who we are targeting so that we can get integrated on a global scale. And then we're going to start shifting our folk after we have some fundamentals um, we're going to start shifting towards, um, well, our goal, our target audience will be, or I'm sorry, our B2B target market will be, you know, more entertainment services like video on demand, which are also global. There are more people who, people who tend to have a little extra money do have those services more than others. Um, whenever you're looking on a global market. So we'll, we'll be integrating those the, through the DAO. You can make suggestions and votes on who we should be targeting. And our our goal is to have every type of subscription you can imagine. Our, we're just gonna do the spray and pray approach though, where we, ta- we contract, contact everyone imaginable and that has subscriptions and constantly be reiterating our message and informing them about our growth and our reach and our demand, sharing with them the community's input and requests and this type of strategy of constant um, uh, awareness to the p- uh, potential uh, e-commerce and um, subscription properties will just start marinating more over time. It's going to be a slower growth at first. However, as as we have more holders, our ability to dictate where we want to integrate will be a lot uh, more seamless. I, so whenever I was building the um, credit card processing apps and APIs, what the biggest challenge was is 2.9% is what Visa and MasterCard are charging. You can get kind of, I mean, if you're the size of Stripe or PayPal, you can get a slightly fractions of a, a cent um, off. However, it's what I'm trying to get at is it's a very challenging market to penetrate. However, the company that I was part of at the time was, ended up processing $15 million a month in a very uh, challenging uh, industry. So I learned a lot of sales tactics and the same type, the the first salespeople that are going to be onboarded after we get the uh, money raised are people who already are vetted and understand this concept. What I'm trying to explain though is there is so much competition in that space in this web three subscription space, there's no competition in what we're trying to accomplish. So as, as long as we have the purchasing power from our holders, I do not see it as a challenge to get people onboarded. I do think the challenge for a lot of the tokens, why you don't see as many up there doing that aren't, that aren't its own blockchain is because the gas um, underlying gas fee. Um, And then secondly, the other uh, reason is because the price isn't stable. So, like, let's just say USDC. Well, you still have to have an underlying token. That one's stable. But then you take something like Shiba Inu and the price is all over the place. That one has an underlying token too. But then you take Ethereum and that, that price goes up and down. So there just hasn't been a perfect fit. I would say that just having a stable coin making payments, um, Gnosis Chain, formerly known as XDAI, they they would have been able to just facilitate if they targeted just subscriptions, they could uh, probably have a good chance of just integrating with various websites, even though they're banned and you can't buy um, die in um, the USA, which is a large market. What I'm trying to get at is so they, they, they could have a fighting chance. However, 
They're not going to have reflection built into it. They're not going to have any incentive. That's the paradigm shift that we're bringing. Yeah, not only have we thought about all these other problems, yes, we've got those out of the way, but now we have icing on top that you're able to pay with just re your reflection earned. So that's um, that's where I was going there. Yeah, man, there's a lot to this. I, I, I do see some some pretty big challenges coming up for you guys. So you mentioned electricity, right? Um, um you know, I'm American, and I'll tell you what, there's no American electricity company that's going to accept crypto anytime in the near future just because we have the SEC. And it's super difficult to get something that is, I guess it's technically a commodity right now. I don't even understand what crypto is in the eyes of my government some days. Um, but it's going to move towards the financial sector. We're just not there yet. But when it does, there's going to be regulation and, like, in particular, one thing that, you know, I guess our Congress has been talking about a lot lately is stable coins. So pairing anything to an insecure asset is is uh, starting to be viewed as like taboo. And they're starting to look at like things like BUSD and USDC as banks. And they're starting to try to regulate them as such. Do you have a plan to, I'm not going with this where you think I am, <laughs> um, well, my question is going in the direction of, do you have a plan to start this in countries that are more open to such things than a country like America, which has the SEC and the IRS that kind of oversee us in, in most financial matters? Yes. Yeah, so whenever I was originally talking about the globe, um, we're trying to focus on a global market is we want to focus our sales into crypto friendly countries or ones that are agnostic to types of payments in general. So I, I don't, I agree that in the U S it will be challenging to get on board with the water and gas and electric. However, in El Salvador and Venezuela and Brazil and potentially India and all through the, um, all, all through Europe and whatnot, there's many, I mean, there's many countries that crypto adoption is blowing through the roof right now. And so those, those will be our initial, I already know those are going to be our initial um, partners on boarded. And so we're going to, you know, we're going to attempt. Um, I, I do see that in the U.S. that more um, e-commerce related, um, entertainment related subscriptions, those might be more friendly. Um, however, we're just going to. I, so whenever I was processing for my last company, we, we had clients all over the world, too. That was our approach because the USA in the USA the market was very stringent and uh, stricter, and so having translations and um, salespeople from around the world and focused on their own um, uh, demographic was a huge plus. And so I, I agree completely with the the challenge the challenges, but we're ready to face them head on. If for it really depends. We will we will go down the long road if people tried to say that we were a bank or whatnot. I, I don't think I, I wholeheartedly know we're not a bank. And I do feel that there might be in general on Uniswap and whatnot might they have they're going to be probably the 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 front runner in any type of settlement and, and making um basically the case for uh, future uh, DEXs as well. So if our DEX, I don't see our token itself having issues, but if our DEX for some reason um, had it issues, well, I do have some uh, backup ideas on how we can um, continue to run uh, viral coins seamlessly, you know, making it into a actual standalone stable coin and then by converting the liquidity and putting it into an actual bank and then being able to including all the reflection and all of the taxes or the 5% tax total into the uh, and then so it basically be a its own standalone stable coin with reflection built into it which has never been done so that would put us into the pool that you were just talking about with the stable coin uh, if they end up regulating those. However, at the end of the day, uh, that stable coin would be dollar for dollar backed 
And I think that my perspective is that those stable coins are going to be around longer than the algorithmic or the hybrid ones if regulation came into play. So that would that would be that would be our one of our backup options if that came into that that topic became an issue. Okay. I mean, uh, solid answer, solid answer. Okay, I just realized how long I have spoken. So it's now time for the community questions. And I'm sure based on the amount of DMs that I'm receiving, you guys have um, many. With that being said, I have to be honest with you, I've never done this before, Viral Coin. Um, first time, and I, I will do it live on the AMA. There's a lot more to this project than I feel that we could cover in a full hour. So I'm going to invite you back for a free AMA as soon as you guys have a solid update that you want to talk about. So keep us informed on this channel. I, I really like your idea. I think the scope that you guys are going for is huge. Um, but I would love to see this succeed. So please stay in touch. With that being said, we're now going to go to my wonderful Haven here. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, I don't think I'm going to have time to go through the text section and answer any of those. So first person to unmute in VC gets to ask their question. Please be polite. If there are multiple ones of you, I will choose who's speaking. Go ahead. Guys, I currently have four of you DMing me about this project. Does nobody want to ask a question for the team in BC? If not, I can go to the text section. Okay, let's go to the text section. Give me just one second. Okay, so to ask your questions, do it in the most recent post that Dumbledore put up, the We're Racing Ducks After. And you guys can type it there. I see a lot of LFGs. There is no way my grilling community does not have any questions on this project. Wow. Okay. Um, I will get back to the question that I had then and I'll keep talking. So how did you guys raise the funds on each of the liquidity pools that you guys have? You mentioned that you self-funded a lot of this. Yeah. So how our contracts actually work is we could put only, we could just pair $1 worth of USDC and pair it with viral and put it in our liquidity pool. However, as every new buy occur, uh, occurs, let's say uh, just to put it in simple terms, you buy a hundred dollars worth of viral, you're sent, it's routed through the viral contract, you're sent that vi you're sent an equal amount of uh, viral, and now we mint more viral and pair it with the USDC and deposit it into our liquidity pool. So that, with that being said, it doesn't uh, do it doesn't shift one um, token value greater than the other on the buys and sells because of the arbitrage we're doing, where we mint more and deposit it or buy it out and then burn it. So it's, it hasn't, so we, we only, we put a couple thousand dollars into each of the liquidity pools. However, it wasn't even necessary because this, this whole, this whole concept of operating a DEX this way wasn't even ever coded before. It w I, I mean, if, if, if there's any contracts loose out there, you know, you can just check and check out and validate yourself and see the unique mechanisms that we included to facilitate these transactions. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it hasn't been done in this way before. Um, and I think just, the, you know, that aspect alone of this project is, uh, is, is pretty revolutionary. So, okay. I, 
I bought the viral coin. I am now holding said viral coin. What it's not doing is it's not showing up on my KuCoin scanner. So is there a way for me to view the viral coin chart outside of the viral coin website? Or is there even a way on the website? Yeah, there's a, there's a way on the website. Let me see right now. Let me go pull it. The charts, because there's been the, we have, I believe, Dex Screener um, incorporated. Let me see here. Let me go check. Yeah, the, since there's very little activity at the moment, it doesn't always register. Um, let me just go pull up the charts real quick and see if I can see. One second, let me move it. Yeah, we need to um, update the charts. Um, I just realized that the the charts itself aren't reflecting correctly on a deck screw. I'm going to change it over to deck screener. Um, I can publish that later today and it'll be easier for you to uh, track the charts there. Well, our goal, we need to get on coin market cap. There's so it's different than just getting a token listed. We had to basically um, list as a DEX itself on each one of these seven EVM networks. So we ended up uh, using um, the graph and building out everything that was required. And they have, they want to see a certain amount of activity on our decks before they'll list us. The other thing that I want to do is there is an obsolete, an obsolete project called viral coin from five or six years ago. It's a completely dead chain. However, I want to get that delisted because there is so, because there's confusion, even though we're viralcoin.com, when you Google viral coin, that result often pops up at the top. So do not get that mistake in anyone. Um, so I'll update the charts later today to make it more convenient for everyone uh, to check and monitor. However, the graphs are going to be looking different. It's going to be looking like a, a flat line in terms of price because the price isn't going up or down. So it's, but you'll be able to see volume and whatnot and use different metrics. So it's a different set of, eyes, you, a, a different mindset that you need when looking at the charts than whenever you're looking at a token that you hope is going to skyrocket in price or wh whatnot, what have you. Oh, yeah. We have a friend of the channel. His name is, uh, I guess we call him Demi Dev on here. He actually launched a stable coin on ETH. So I have a little bit of experience in, in just sort of evaluating. And I wanted to see your holders, the amount of minting, the volume, all that kind of stuff. Um, so whenever you get the chance, or if you can just shoot me over the CA, I would love that as well. I guess I guess right. I can I, 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 Anyways, okay, my question. Um, how big is your team? Check your, check your DMs. There's like a lot of questions there. Oh, give me one second. Hold up. Well, but before we get to these guys, because uh, I'm super interested in this. Um, uh, how large is the team that you're using, Bowercoin? So I can go through the members right now. Let me see here. We've got Eric, who's on here. He is um, a crypto legal expert. Um, he is one of the founders. He helped us uh, form the foundation and um, all of the infrastructure and uh, facilitating the uh, VC uh, transactions. He's. I've worked with him on projects for you know over ten years from different mobile applications and websites. We've got uh, Noble, who is our lead smart contract developer. He is, he thinks outside of the box. He doesn't like, well, yes, we borrowed the Uniswap V2, V2 uh, code for the basis of our, um, uh, our DEX. However, all of the custom functionality that we came up with, he was able to um, code because he likes writing it himself. And we've, we've had to consult with, three other smart contract writers along the way to make sure our reflection code was uh, correct because uh, we, we didn't like the standard reflection code that everybody else was using because we felt that the total, when, whenever doing the redistribution, that it didn't, uh, based, based on how many decimal points that you could have on um, these EVM networks, it would inevitably burn tokens over a long period of time. So we had to come up with the most efficient reflection 
um, algorithm to use. And so the, he's, he's, um, he's very valuable to our team. And um, then we have um, Asif, who's with us on the call today. He has been working with Fortune 500 companies. Uh, he's done consultant work for them over the years, big name brands. He's got years of crypto experience and he's helping facilitate um, this, this fundraising and also uh, some marketing initiatives. And then we've got um, Yang, who's our lead Web2 developer. Yang is, his talents are in not only building um, a website, but making it extremely friendly to somebody who might not be accustomed to it from the flow of the clicking of the buttons to what is displayed and how to get out the information that's necessary. He works with a guy named Amit, who's the uh, lead designer, and they work hand in hand together just to make the best user experience. So for example, we, so the UI itself for, uh, on ViralCoin, the actual uh, DEX itself, that um, form we, we got from uh, SushiSwap, but we made so many modifications to it. For example, if you switched on a mobile device to between the EVM networks, it wouldn't automatically switch and it would cause an error. And this is still live in SushiSwap today. It wasn't, they, they're mobile optimized, but they just weren't. Um, there was just bugs that we found along the way. So we updated ours to just fluidly switch between the networks and uh, with just a single click. And we, we, so anyways, that's, the, I just, ha I love talking about our team. We've got Jackie. She has been in the crypto scene for a while, specifically on discords and telegrams. And so she's now starting to grow a Twitter um, community. When she heard about viral coin, she became obsessed with um, just wanting to find out how she can be involved. So she's just educated herself and been sharing with the community what she's learned. And um, then we've, uh, we've got Moon, who is um, our marketing advisor, and he is extremely talented. He's a digital nomad, travels all over the world. And he has uh, been with us since uh, the beginning of launching and um, I'm very thankful to have him on our team. And then we've got Pone, who is our lead of the community management and facilitates all the conversations in the room. And then there's several other people I forgot to thank and give a shout out to uh, who have helped us along the way and are still part of our team that we value and dear truly. And yeah, shout out to Moon. He's definitely a part of the channel. Um, I'm a big fan. Okay, so now we have a bunch of community questions. Um, do you mind us going about five minutes over? My pleasure. Okay, great. So we're gonna start with Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka asks, are only USDC swaps possible in the viral pool? So, two parts. In, we're only building liquidity for viral USDC in the liquidity pool. I will say on, um, on Binance Smart Chain, it's actually uh, BUSD. We had to use that instead because there wasn't enough liquidity of USDC on Pancake Swap in terms of our our goal of getting ten billion dollars into liquidity pool. So we didn't want to chastise ourselves by doing USDC on all the other um, networks. It was completely fine. And to, if you're asking. If you could add liquidity, anybody can add liquidity for any uh, any pair they want with viral. The there's no we removed it from the UI though because we didn't want to encourage it. And secondly, you you'd have to just write directly to the contracts to do so. And if you did add a pair, um, what it does is it would check the price. Uh, okay, let's say it was um, let's just say it was cake. Um, I don't know the price of it off the top of my head right now, but let's just say, let's say it was $5. Well, um, let's say that that's what the value of cake was in our liquidity pool in terms of pairing it with viral. Well, if it was, if there was an, uh, if it was cheaper 
to buy it through uh, Pancake Swap. Well, what our contract would do would it would route it through Pancake Swap before swapping it to USDC. Um, if it was cheaper, though, in the liquidity pool with the based on the liquidity you provided, it would the transactions would occur through there. So it's not incentivized to add liquidity. There might be some types of arbitrage opportunities, which are healthy for these types of ecosystems um, that somebody savvy in that area could do. However, it's just not something that's our focal point. And that's that's basically where the USDC is in general. I like your USD for Binance too. That's, uh, that's just smart. Smart working because we do not use USDC. I use USDC on ERC20 and BUSD on BEB20. Okay. Um, next question. Let's see. So, Hendoko just has a simple question. Just want to ask. So, no tax percentage for marketing. No tax percentage for marketing. Does that mean you're sending out your referral link or? Um, so work, um, work, uh, work. Build in a marketing budget, right? So for instance, I buy $10, I receive $9 of the coin of that 10%, let's say 3% goes directly towards the developers to pay for marketing. Um, do you have any? Do you have any <laughs> okay, I understand. So no, we're not, we're spending the external money raised from the VC towards the marketing. We're not, um, the, we don't have a percentage of the tax that goes towards marketing. One percent goes to the team. That is that is true. However, um, and, and if there is no refer, that uh, the other referral percent does go to um, the team as well. So the um, but there is no uh, marketing budget based on the transactions done in the room. We uh, based on the legal counsel that we've received, the best strategy to get this. Uh, to get viral coin as large as possible is to raise external money and to not be spending the community money on the marketing. I love that answer. All right, next question we've got. Uh, okay, I'm going to ask Dasha this question, um, but I feel like it should be a pretty simple answer. So, and the reason I ask these questions are, as you notice, you know, people like to join halfway through and so on. So we're just going to give everyone as much information as we can. So Dasha asked, just want to ask if how the reflection works, is it auto compounding like with APY or with someone or just the buy with sales? It auto compounds with APY. Yeah, and you get the, you get the, well, I don't know if auto compounds is the word, but based on, on every transaction, based on the percentage of the liquid, uh, based on uh, the total supply you own on that EVM network, you are getting that percent of the 3%. So the the more viral coin you hold, the, the more reflection you're going to receive. And as, and yes, as you receive more reflection, uh, if it, if your percentage of the total outweighs the people that might have sold or did subscription transactions, and you let's say you're just, you're like, okay, I'm waiting for... Um, I'm waiting for uh, this video on demand service before I start spending my reflection or I need to have a certain amount in my wallet. Um, I only, I only put, I only bought a certain amount. And so now you're, you're, if you're not doing transactions and you're holding out longer than anybody else, you're going to be getting more reflection. Okay. Okay. Uh, give me one more minute i'm gonna ask one maybe two quick questions here guys i'm sorry y'all got them in a little bit late to me tonight um let's see yeah this is a good question so this comes from uh matt and is this only the v1 of your website are you going to develop an app to make things easier in the future because of your utility so I will, I will preface this. I would very much like to talk to you after the AMA one-on-one. Um, but there's a level of complexity in this project that doesn't explain itself easily, right? So anything that can help in just making the common person understand at least the part of this project that's important to them, I think is a great idea. Do you guys plan on a D app that makes that easier? 
So, yes, our website, the first updates will be coming, and uh, I think it's going to be within a, within a month. It depends on – I'm having my initial conversations um, with Multifarm. Um, I have a call scheduled with them, and they build DeFi dashboards. And since this is a new concept, I want people to be able to – check the past 30 days, the past day, and see what the what type of reflection is uh, predictable for the upcoming days or the current day. So um, Multifarm, they worked with Olympus and OHM, and they made their dashboard. You know, those API percentages really got the world changed in the crypto industry whenever they put those out there. So we have to, the, the conversations I'm going to be having is how do I, how do we articulate to the community what types of returns are occurring because of all these uh, transactions and to give people a, a better understanding instead of just being in the unknown. We're also uh, having graphs built that will further explain and basically like what you'll see in a white paper that explain on the graphs how these, how the um, vault contracts work because the vault tra contract is effectively doing arbitrage on its own to balance the liquidity pool. And we're going to put that all to make it uh, explain a lot easier. So that's, that's you know, updates that will be live within the next month. Now, the app itself, so it's it's kind of interesting for, for how we're uh, building it. Most apps are connecting to one EVM network at a time. You switch your wallet and whatnot. So what our team has been researching and have found solutions to do to be able to connect to all of your wallets um, at once on all the EVM networks within the app. And it will, and so then that's where all the subscription transactions will facilitate and reside. Um, yes, you can buy, um, sell, trade there, standard, that's easy. Um, the subscription aspect is the most groundbreaking though, because it's gonna be seamless for you to, you could be on your computer or on a web, you could just be on a regular browser. You don't even have to be in the, uh, on, in our app itself and then it asks for the code and you just go look on the app itself grab the code enter it now you can continue the checkout process and then you can manage cancel renew all from within the app itself and that is our bit that's where we're putting a lot of our fundraising into is building the app and you know what i am a builder by heart that is my passion i love the app development process i love the architecture I love finding every bug that's even possibly imaginable. I love working with um, people, to, uh, code reviewers and third parties to assess our code to make sure that there's no bugs or vulnerabilities in it. I've, I'm fully uh, immersed in this industry. And so now that we've built Filecoin and we're raising the money, we've got teams lined up to do the marketing and hiring and whatnot from people that I've worked with from experience with, and I get to spend my time building exactly what we've described on this call to a T and on time. I love it, man. All right. That's the final question we're going to, we're going to ask from the community here. Um, I will just answer one quickly. Somebody asked if you will have trust wallet support. Um, I can answer that just very fast. Trust wallet is based on listings and the amount of holders. So that is when Trust Wallet will show up. Um, if you have any closing comments, Viral Coin, now is the time. I'm going to end the recording in just a minute. I appreciate Achilles and everyone here today for giving me the opportunity to just share our Viral Coin experience and the paradigm shift that we're bringing to the subscription industries. I understand this is not the standard, typical uh, token that might come on these AMAs, but I. I want to share with not only new people into crypto, I want I want these opportunities like I get to speak with people who are well versed and understand the market and are able to bring up challenges they see and just have um, technical conversations with people who are have different interests in the industry and see if we can find something in common. And I, I just I really appreciate it again. And um, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much for coming to the Haven, man. Um, if you check your DMs, actually, there's something I'd like to talk to you about after. But now, 
I'm going to end the recording.